All right, we've already done part one and part two, and now it is time for part three. And this is where we're going to be diving into pretty much the rest of the adjustments on the wing sprint cars. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can build your own setup, what you want to look for, where to start, why you want to try one thing over another, and all of that good stuff. So let's get started. <laughs> what's up everybody thomas brennan here thank you very much as always for joining me and like i said we're going to be diving into the rest of the setup stuff here on iRacing with the wing sprint cars now remember i've said this numerous times already uh this goes for the 360s and the 410s um there is one thing you know different in terms of adjustments on the 410s that's the engine restrictor um that's something that you got to play around with for yourself uh for example in the inside of program i don't restrict the engines um, in the setups just because that's really a driver dependent type thing some people prefer to just do throttle control some people want to restrict it and just hold it wide open it really depends on your driving style but with the 360s we don't have that problem so we don't got to worry about it okay now like i said we're going to be taking a look at all of the other setup stuff when it comes to the wing sprint cars and if you remember in video one we took the iRacing setup made a couple of just simple tweaks to it and improved it by like a tenth of a second per lap. In video two, we really dived into, talked some about the aero profile, but really we got into the loads, okay, and how that left rear bump rubber and that packer can change just all kinds of stuff when it comes to the loads on the car, specifically the rear end. On this video, we're going to be talking about some base setups um, that you can, you know, kind of start with. Uh, what you want to look for in terms of, you know, shocks, um, bars, wheel spacing, stagger, that type of stuff. And, you know, just kind of go from there. Now, I'm going to be showing you some different things here um, on the track and then also in telemetry. So you can, so can kind of see what those adjustments do. And then in the fourth and final video of this little mini series, I'm going to show you the adjustments you want to make going from tacky to slick okay but the main thing to know is that if you get this right if you get the setup right for the track when it's tacky going to the slick is going to be a lot easier okay if you are completely off then it's a lot harder but when you're just trying to stay ahead of the track it's much much easier okay so let's head over and let's get started all right so we've got up the base setup that we've been using in the last two videos and a uh, couple of things when it comes to like base starting setups there's really a bunch of different avenues that you can do with this um you can use the iRacing ones and make a couple changes to them like we've talked about you can um go online and look up uh sprint car setups okay um like maxim's got little things out there that tell you like do these shocks do these bars um you know this wheel spacing uh triple x has them um eagle used to have them i don't know if they still do uh there's free setups out there that you can get like on the ssr website we have free setups that you can get as baseline so there's a bunch of different avenues that you can go okay in terms of like what to do on you know bigger versus smaller tracks and things like that that's what i'm going to cover because when we talk about bait there's so many different base setups that you can use it you can we could spend two hours just talking about different bases okay the thing that you need to know is that the iRacing racing setup that they give you and if you look at this setup here if we go to a lot of these tracks right cedar lake it's almost the, exactly the same different gear ratio and different stagger um and more wing eldora same less stagger less wing right um whoops uh let's go to fairberry same more stagger more wing okay so it it doesn't really matter what base you're starting off with all right now when you are at a bigger track okay the thing that you need to understand is that rotation of the car right so getting the car to rotate easier is going to be the the goal all right so a track like fairberry uh lima land um even you know lanier 
I-55, Kern, tracks like that where you're really on throttle. They're tight corners, even a track like Lucas Oil, right? It's got longer straights. It's got those really tight corners. You want the car to really go into the corner, rotate, and stick, all right? On a track like that, you're going to want to have a little bit more tilt in the car, which is when we talk about tilt, we're talking about the right side being higher than the left side. That's the that's the car winging over. You can do that dynamically or statically. It's completely up to you. And what I mean by that is, is you could put it into the car, like adding turns on the right side and taking it half a turn out of the left sides. Or you could do it by softening the bump rubber and decreasing the packer, right? It's up to you okay for me what i like to do at a lot of the shorter tracks is is i'll usually put bar split into the car i'll run 10 and a quarters on the right thousands on the left sometimes i'll run 1050s on the right and 1025s on the left okay it really just kind of depends on the track state how bumpy it is how tight it is things like that all right so that's kind of a, a simple base setup that you can use um, sometimes even on bigger tracks, I'll use bar split, but it kind of depends on the track. Okay. So just to illustrate this, what we'll do here is let's get rid of these turns. All right. And we're going to run just 10 and a quarters on the right with thousands on the left. Okay. Um, fuel and gear ratio is still the same wing. All that stuff is still the same. And what bar split does is it, like I said, it tilts the car more, both statically and dynamically. And it lets the car rotate a little bit easier. Now you see there on the exit how it over rotated just a little bit. There, I just didn't turn the wheel enough in the center. But you can see we're not having to turn the wheel that much. And the car is winging over, going right through the corners. Some people like bar splits, some people don't. It's really, it's really personal preference. Okay, if we take out the bar split, let's go back to what we had, which was a 10 at 50 on the right front and thousands everywhere else. You're going to notice that the car, it's not going to have to be turned that much more. Okay. But it does have to be turned a little bit more. Now, this is one of those things that is actually on a tacky track. It can be a little bit harder to feel sometimes because you're just wide open on throttle, especially on a track like this. But if we look at this here in telemetry, bar split's going to be the color lines. White is going to be the flat. And if we go back to the right heights, you can see here that in the corners, we're winging over harder or more, about three-tenths of an inch more on average through the corners with the bar split than we are without it okay and then if you look at like our loads for example the left rear is pretty close to the same maybe 10 pound difference um, there is some difference on the right rear but you'll notice that the right rear load okay even though we've got a stiffer bar it's actually got less load and that's because the stiffer bar it's got less travel in it, right? So this is something we talked about in the previous video. Just because you add a turn or do something does not guarantee that it's going to add more weight there. Suspension, travel, all of that stuff really matters. This is what why the aero of these cars is so important, all right? Getting the profile of the car and everything to be right and then allowing the, to ev everything to work, right? Getting the car in the corner, getting sucked down by the wing, keeping it nice and straight and smooth makes a big difference. You stiffen up that right rear bar, okay, what you can do is, yes, it can add more load to that right rear, but 
it could also decrease the load depending on what everything where where everything else is happening or what is happening everywhere else i guess would be the right way to say that okay so just something to think about all right it's not always just black and white set in stone you know cut and dry okay so when it comes to making adjustments okay they will affect the car basically the same it's just the data might not always look the way that you think it should where you're like well i thought that would look differently okay that's the main thing to realize and there's adjustment guides out there you can find them we've got a free one on the ssr website um, once again you can go find those online too like i think triple x has an adjustment guide for its real life stuff but it applies i mean iRacing is based on reality so it applies and then there's also free guides by other people who are on the sim where it, it tells you what to adjust and how to adjust it and things like that okay so there's ways of doing this where you're not so you know like just over overwhelmed and confused okay so first thing you want to do is get the profile of the car correct and get your your bars correct okay um for the most part if you roll the car out and it feels pretty good you could leave the bars alone the rest of the race you don't have to mess you don't have to mess with them you don't have to adjust them all right um if you look at like the insider sets for example the tacky uh you know torsion bars for example might be 10 and a quarters on the right thousands on the left the slick might be 10 and a quarters up front thousands on the rear and that'll be the bars that are used from wall heat and feature right like very you know it's rare it does happen but it's rare where i'm going to change a bar for just the feature and usually it has to be like a specific type of track okay so once you get your bars right you're pretty much good okay and like i said this combination that iRacing's got is very standard, works very, very well. Or, like I said, you can add some tilt to the car. One other thing to know about the bars, last note, um, you know, stiffer is going to make the car, uh, you know, a little bit more um, responsive, okay? It'll also make it a little bit more stable, right? So if you have the car stiffened up with some stiffer bars, it'll definitely make it more stable. This can actually be beneficial, especially if you're running on a, a you know, a bumpier track or, um, you know, you're run you got a lot of fuel, right? Like if you're running a feature race and the track is still really tacky, having some stiffer bars when you've got 24 gallons of fuel can actually make the car feel better. It'll also sta help stabilize the car aerodynamically, which is good since we've got the downforce from the wing. On the flip side of that, those softer bars are going to make the car more compliant, which can also be good for bumps. But if you've got them too soft, then what happens is, is, is instead of it riding, you know, smooth like a Cadillac, it's just bouncing around way too much and hard to control. So there's a fine line there. And they also will work really good when the track slicks off and get good grip, you know, find a little bit more traction in the slick. But it makes the car feel a little bit less stable especially in situations where you've got a lot of fuel okay so it's a trade-off there's not it's not right or wrong it's a trade-off okay now the biggest adjustments that you're going to want to do for building your setup okay are going to be stagger wheel spacing and shocks all right your shock combination you can basically start off with this okay this is a very good shock combination to use and there are variations that you can apply to this, but for the most part, this is a very good starting point that iRacing has for you. Um, I use ones like this. I use this, not this one exactly, but very, very close to it and variations of it as my starting point all the time. All right. What you need to know is, is this is something that you will change throughout the race with the, the shocks. All right. Now we'll get more into that when we get to the slick video. But for the tacky track stuff, understand what these do, okay? So the bump is what, that's bump or compression, all right? That's going to be when the load is transferring to that corner, when the shock is compressing. Rebound is when the shock is extending, all right? So what we've got here with this shock combination right now is, is essentially when we go into a corner, the car is going to wing over and then it's basically holding it there. All right. With this higher rebound in the front, it's keeping the left front down more. And then the left rear, it's obviously holding that thing down a lot. Now, one thing to note is, is the left rear rebound does 
need to kind of match the bump rubber okay now when you're just wide open you know full throttle in it it's not going to make as big a difference but as the track slicks off more or if it gets really bumpy these two have a big effect on one another because if you're running way too stiff a bump rubber and you've got the shock tied down what can happen is is that's where you can get that what i call that pogo the pogo stick effect where it just bounces and a lot of times what it'll do is it won't just bounce that corner it could actually lift up the left rear and unload the left rear because that bump rubber is literally springing the chassis the chassis is pulling the left rear off the ground before the shock can extend all right that's rare but it, it can happen okay so there's something to think about so you want to kind of try to really match those the left rear corner of the of these cars is super important i mean you could do most of your tuning just on this left rear corner right do some minor stuff everywhere else <laughs> get the left rear corner right you're going to be good okay so bigger tracks i will usually start off with a stiff a little bit stiffer bump rubber smaller tracks i'll start off with a little bit softer okay and then the packer i'm using to control how much dynamic tilt i have in the car all right um, for me, depending on the track, I like anywhere from like two and a half, three inches to, you know, sometimes four just depends on the track. Okay. So get that dialed in. And once you got that dialed in, okay, now you can start playing with the other aspects of the setup. And that's going to be your wheel spacing, your stagger and your, um, your uh, shocks, okay? And the shocks for the most part are gonna be pretty much good. Your wheel spacing and your stagger are gonna be your go-to adjustments, all right? And then ride heights later on as you have fuel, okay? So let's talk about wheel spacing because this is super important, super easy. The farther the right rear is out, the looser the car is going to be, all right? And the reason for that is, is that if you think about it, it's just simple like geometry okay if you have two points here if you think about the left rear as being the the center point and then the right rear is going to be making the radius well if it's really close to it how hard is it to move that compared to when it's way out here much easier right it's like it's like if you have a a bolt to break loose you don't grab the wrench with the handle this long you grab the big one right so you can really get some leverage on it it's the same concept on the wheel spacing okay um, bigger tracks, 1750 to 1850 is a good starting point, depending on your top wing. Okay. So to show you this, let's do this right here. So we just ran some laps with the, the wing and this wheel spacing the same. Let's put this wheel out to 1850. We'll put the left rear at 1375. Let's go turn a couple of laps here and notice just how much easier this thing rotates. And when you are thinking about wheel spacing or any adjustment, the way that you want to really think about this is, is that the right rear turns you, the left rear drives you. Yes, obviously we get drive out of the right rear, but if you think about it in that context, it'll make it much easier for you to make adjustments. So if your car is, if you're going into the corner and your car is tight on entry, look first at that right rear. Okay, what adjustments can you make to that right rear to help that car turn? All right. So for example, we just moved the right rear out. Car still felt pretty good. Let's say the car still feels kind of tight though. Let's increase our stagger and go back out. Stagger the, is going to naturally rotate the car. And what we want, remember, we're trying to keep the car straight. So we want to be running as much stagger as we can without the car over rotating. Because that'll drive, that'll drive the car, it's make the car drive itself. See how much more the car rotate, how much easier it turns into the corner now. 
We're not even getting up to the marbles because my front was turning in before the car's turn turning so much quicker. Right, we gotta actually wait till like really get up there. But you can see there, even though we moved that right rear out an inch and we added an inch and a half, two inches of stagger, the car's still driving really, really well. It's not loose, right? It's not so loose that we can't drive it. This is something that a lot of people kind of get hung up on is what they'll do is, is they'll have a car, they'll go into the corner and they turn it and it doesn't turn. And then what happens is it breaks loose. And so they think their car is loose and it's actually tight and they'll tighten it up even more. And what happens is, is that problem gets worse and worse and worse. The more they tighten it up, the worse it gets. You don't want to break the car loose on entry. You want it to drive itself in there, right? Nice and smooth. There's two types of loose, okay? There's loose from not enough grip where you turn the car in and it just slides. That would be like in the slick where the car doesn't have any grip. So the rear end just slides out from underneath you. There's also too much right rear grip or too much right rear drive where you're going into the corner and the right rear has got so much more drive than the left rear that it's over rotating. It's gripped up, but it's over rotating. Okay, so that's when, when you're making those adjustments and you, you think the car's loose on entry, ask yourself, is it loose because it's over-rotating, it's got grip and it's over-rotating, or I'm turning it and it's sliding? And if it's sliding, ask yourself, am I hitting the slick, am I turning it too hard, or do I just need to make an adjustment? Your first notion should not always be, oh, I got to change a, a bunch of stuff. That shouldn't be it. With these cars, now you don't need to do that. One or two adjustments is 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 good right if you like i said if it rolls off the truck good obviously we don't have a truck but it's just what we used to say if it rolls off the truck good you're going to be good so when we look at this here okay so the white line is with the stagger and the right rear out the colored line is not and if we look at this here you can see load wise that right rear even though we've moved it out a bunch adding stagger actually increases the load on that right rear because of the, because of the the size of the tire so that'll actually increase the load on that side another thing it does is is more stagger will actually give you more side bite so that's something you can actually look at when you are doing wheel spacing and stagger there's times where i'm on a big track and i'll actually be running like a track like eldora i'll be running like 13 and a half inches of stagger but it's because the wheel spacing and the wing that i'm running complement that all right so that's where you want to start really thinking about things outside of the box don't look at it as just like well this is what we always done try different stuff because it can actually make a huge difference for you and like i've said in the last two videos and i'll keep saying get the car comfortable for you if you do that you're going to be amazed at how well you can do that's the stagger and the wheel spacing all right now the left rear is basically the same thing as the right rear it's just instead of thinking about it in terms of like you know turning part we're thinking about the driving part now the wheel spacing on the left rear can also affect your entry because like we talked about those two points right if we move that out well it's the same principle if we move the left rear out what have we done we've basically widened our wheelbase it's still gonna, it's going to be harder to to turn around now now that also does affect your drive off the corner right when we talk about the left rear wheel spacing so typically what you would do as the track slicks off is is you move the right rear in and the left rear out that's kind of the the go-to that you do now shock the shocks are actually the shocks have improved a ton on this car you know it used to be if we were going to make a shock adjustment we would you know we would go from like a four five to a six three to like have to feel a difference in the shock that's not the case anymore you can actually feel a pretty significant difference by just going you know one valve basically two clicks so we just ran this with the five fours up front all right. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually tie down this left front with the, let's go with the three seven. Okay. I wouldn't usually run this, but let's do this for the sake of, of the example here. Notice how the, when we came off the corner there, how the left front stays pinned. You 
See how the car's actually tighter right now? And then there it got a little bit looser. There it got really loose. So what's going on with that shock, right? What is that? What is that doing? Well, what's happening there is actually twofold. With the rebound, and the rebound is really is really the most important aspect of the left front shock. The rebound, what's happening there is if you have a lot of rebound, or I should just say more rebound, when the car wings over, it's going to hold that left front down. This can help the car rotate because of the winged over platform, right? Keeping it tilted and letting it drive around. This can also, to a certain extent, tighten the car up. Now you might be wondering like, well, how can it tighten the car up? Well, remember we just talked about, there's two types of loose, where if the right rear has too much grip to it, too much load, too much drive, it can over rotate the car. Well, the left front can actually help balance that. Remember, shocks are a timing device. They're they're controlling the timing of the load. So what we want is we want the car to go into the corner, wing over nice and easy. And then as we're coming out, that's when we want it to basically be standing back up and we're getting that good drive off. If the car feels like it's sliding out and it's not getting enough drive to the right rear, we need to decrease some of that left rear rebound, get a little bit more weight to the, to the right rear a little bit quicker. If the car feels like it's actually driving itself around where the right rear has got too much drive and it's over rotating because of it, then you could look at increasing the left rear rebound to, to keep it that weight there just a little bit longer so it doesn't over rotate. And this is where people can get really confused on shocks. If we look at this here, so this has got the tie down left front shock on it. If we look at our loads on this, as we are in the middle of the corner, notice the load on the left front at this point. As we're coming out of the corner, the left front has about 50 more pounds of load on it with that, that tie down shock than it did with that, that four or five. We've got more on the left front, which means what? Well, that means we're gonna have less on the right rear. This is, and keep in mind, like I said, it's all about timing. That is one way that you can help control that. Now, that is a fine tune adjustment. Shocks are more of a fine tune adjustment on these cars, but they do help. They make a big difference, especially when you're talking about being on and off throttle. The shocks will come into play more when we get to the tacky or the slick track stuff. All right. That's one adjustment that you can use is that left front shock. The other one is actually the right front shock. The right front shock does the same thing in terms of the weight to the left rear. If the car is pushing coming off the corner, you could actually increase the right front rebound and it'll keep that weight up front just a little bit longer. So we're getting good drive and we're not having too much left rear drive making it push. I know you're probably thinking, if for those of you who have, don't do this a lot or are newer to this, I know you're probably thinking right now, Tommy, how the hell do I know when I should be making a shock adjustment versus a stagger or wheel spacing adjustment. Um, the way that you want to think about this is, is like I just mentioned a minute ago, shocks are going to be more minor, fine-tune adjustments. All right. If you're coming off the corner and you're on throttle and that thing's just plowing, that's not shocks. All right. That's, I mean, unless you've got like some ridiculous shock package on there, that's not your shocks. That's going to be, you know, stagger, wheel spacing, wing, bars, something more significant. If you're coming off the corner and you can feel it just a little bit and you're having to kind of correct it while you're in the corner and then you're getting a little bit out of shape and stuff like that, you know, it's smaller stuff. It's not, not too noticeable, but you notice it is scrubbing a little bit of speed. That's going to be shocks. All right. That's where you're going to be looking at making a shock adjustment. So how about the rear shocks? Well, the rear shocks, basically same type of principle. All right, right rear shock, the bump, that's really going to be, that's the compression aspect of it. And that's going to be the load on that right rear. If you've got a car that's over rotating 
on exit, once again, you could look at the bump. If you've got it at a five and the car is getting loose coming off the corner, it's got a little too much drive, you could soften this bump up and that'll slow that down a little bit, that slow that rotation down a little bit. Now, the rebound aspect of it, you're looking at, you know, how long it's keeping the that load there. For example, if the car, you're going into the corner and the car is actually a little bit loose, right? And it's loose because you feel it feels like it's kind of sliding. It's not driving, but it's sliding. You could increase the rebound and hold that weight there a little bit longer on corner entry with that rebound. Now, the left rear is super important because like I said, th this whole left rear corner of the car is just so important now with the way that these things are. And like, I, like I've said numerous times before, that's how it is in real life. You listen to anybody who actually sets these things up, talks about these things, right? top guys, local guys, whatever, they're talking about the left rear, man. Is the left rear stuck? How's it driving? What's it doing? Okay. The left rear is so important. That's why they run those cups on the left rear shock. They, they don't want people to see what shock they've got on there or what bump rubber, what packer and stuff like that. They want to keep all that stuff hidden. All right. They can sit there and say, well, it keeps it from getting dirt in it. Mud, mud. Okay. But it's also so people don't see it um, because it's super important. That left rear can make or break your entire setup. Now the left rear shock, not as important as the bump rubber in the packer, but it's still pretty important. Bump, that's the drive, the drive off. Really, that's where you want to be looking at it is, dry, is the drive off. If the car feels like it's driving off and you're, you're kind of pushing some, look at that bump. Also, when you look at the rebound, if the car feels like it's got a little too much left rear drive, let's say you're running like a, a four seven and the car's got a little too much left rear drive. That could also be too low a rebound because if the rebound, if it's extending too quickly, it's not holding it down. It's not keeping it winged over long enough. And now maybe that bump rubber is expanding or pressing, you know, it's, it's, it's pressing up that shock is expanding quicker, which is pushing that tire down and now you're getting too much left rear drive so this left rear rebound really really important one thing that a lot of drivers will experience with the left rear is they'll come off the corner and i'm sure you guys have all felt this before you come off the corner the car does this right it kind of and then it it kind of snaps and then it wants to shoot to the wall Nine times out of 10, that's going to be the left rear rebound. You've probably got to, you're on a slick track a lot of times and you've got too much left rear rebound. Going from nine to eight is a, a decent change. Like you will feel that difference 100%. The rebound is really going to affect, you're going to make the car, you're going to feel the effects of that more than the, the bump side of things, all right? The bump does change it, but the rebound, you're going to really, you're going to really feel it, all right? Now, Starting off tacky track, you're usually going to start off with an eight to a nine, somewhere right around there. We want the car to wing over. We want it to stay winged over. And that's at all tracks. I don't care what track, even Bristol, right? We want it to wing over and stay winged over. As it slicks off, that's when we'll start looking to, you know, and usually you might have like a three to a four on the bump. As it slicks off, you might look to increase the bump a little bit and decrease the rebound a little bit. And like I said before, a click or two goes a long way with these shocks. All right, and the last but not least is the torsion bar stops. Um, now this is something that once again, like everything else, can really confuse people. And the way that you want to think about this is okay to really try to keep it simple. Is when the track is tacky, you're fast on throttle. You want to have more tilt in it. All right. Like I said before, you can do that dynamically with like the bars. You can do it with this or you can do it with the bar stops. All right. One of my kind of like go to combinations is literally a half in on the right side and a half out on the left side is usually a good starting point for me considering everything else that I'm doing. Right. A lot of times what I'll do is as the track slicks off, I'll actually take turns out of the left rear and add turns to the right rear. And what that's doing is that that's putting more tilt in the car, but it's also giving the right rear more travel to where it can suck down. Remember, like we talked about just a little while ago, when we looked at the right rear torsion bar, right from stiff to soft, that stiffer bar actually had less load on the right rear than the softer bar because the softer bar has got more travel in it. Okay. So there's times where you want to have a little bit more travel as the track slicks off. What you can do is, is raise the car up some and take some tilt out. That'll help to stabilize the car some as it slicks off. Remember when the car slicks off more, and we'll look at this in the slick video, um, which is the next video, we still want it to wing over, right? 
but we don't want it to like wing over and spin out. As you're on a tacky track, you're on throttle, the car is basically loading and staying loaded basically all the way around the track. When the track slicks off, now you're starting to get on and off the throttle more, you're using the throttle throttle control a whole lot more and that's where you see the car raising up and lowering and stuff like that so having that travel having the car a little bit more level will prevent it from snapping on you. also raising the car up can help tighten it up a little bit because now instead of it being so low you got a little bit higher it's got a little bit more roll to it it's going to keep the car from instead of sliding it's going to kind of roll which will allow that little bit more weight transfer so for a tacky track this would be a, a good starting point for me cross weight i don't pay attention to cross weight at all i don't care what this says okay this means nothing to me as long as it's passing tech there's nothing with the cross weight where i'm going to be like oh i needed that 50 percent cross and it doesn't matter you just look at the bar stops all right also you can look at it in terms of you know having the car a little bit lower in the rear having a little bit lower is going to give you a little bit more because you're lowering that vertical center of gravity that's going to give you a little bit stable more stable platform um give you a little bit more side bite but you're going to lose a little bit of forward drive now when you're basically full throttle it's not going to make as big a difference losing forward bite because you're already on throttle suspension loaded and you're going keep in mind though like i talked about before when this car bottoms out it's not a good thing it's a it's bad it's really bad like we talked about in the previous video when we were talking about the loads and stuff like that there comes a point though where it can be too much remember if you got the left rear too low and the right rear too high what happens you get down and out where the left rear is down so much it's actually unloading the right rear and we don't want that it's so like everything else that we've talked about in this video in the previous videos it's a balance okay it is a balance between what you are getting here and what you are giving up here and at the end of the day you want to make the car comfortable so you can go out be smooth consistent and hopefully fast all right you guys so that's going to do it all for this video i hope that shed some light on some things for you broke some stuff down um I know in like, you know, years past, I've done these sprint car setup videos and I've shown like, you know, do this adjustment, do this adjustment, um, you know, try this, try this, do this. And this time it was a little bit more talking and explaining than before, but that's because the way these cars are now, okay, it's not like it used to be. I know I keep saying this over and over, but I really want to hammer this point home. It's not like it used to be where it was like, hey, you know, jack up the front end, drop the, the rear put these bars up front and then make these adjustments as the track slicks off. It's not like that no more. There's so many things that you can do with this and be fast. There really is. It's all about making the car work for you, be comfortable for you. So you're going to need to go out and actually play around with this a little bit. Get that base set up, get the iRacing set up and just try some changes and see how the car feels. Notice the difference in the car. You don't have to have telemetry to do this. You can do it without it. Just feel it, right? Do some laps with the setup, you know, with it being flat off the off the blocks or no turns in any of the bars. And then come in and put three turns in the right rear. Go out, turn some laps, and feel the difference. Then come in, put the right rear back to zero, and then take three turns out of the left rear and feel the difference. Then put three turns in the left rear, right? Go don't just go stop at zero, put it at positive three, go out and feel the difference. Doing that is what's going to allow you to really feel what this car does, right? Put bar split in it, but don't just put 10 and a quarters and thousands, put 10 fifties on the right and nine fifties on the left. Really feel what that bar split does, right? Because when you feel it at, at it, the exaggerated maximum that lets you know this is what that does well i don't need it to do this much of it but i know what it's doing now i can i can dial that back because i'm just looking for a little bit all right that's how you develop that knowledge of not just knowing what to do but when to do it all right i do this every time i racing updates or changes something i go through these cars it's why it I, I, it, why it takes me so long to do this crap right because when they did this refresh that's what i did i went out and i sat there and i adjusted one thing at a time to the max to the minimum turn laps try this try that and you're just getting the feel for it over and over and over with all the different components yes it takes time but you can go out get yourself some base setups whether they're i racing or free setups or wherever you get them 
get a setup and adjustment guide. You can get it on the SSR website for free or you can find them online anywhere else and start making some changes and getting a feel for it. And like I showed in the very first video, there's just a couple of things that you can that you need to do to make the car, you know, essentially faster because the iRacing setup is slower the way that it is versus uh, you know, a setup that I build or other builders out there do just because of how they have it, right? You know, the nose wing is just a little too much. The top wing might be a little too much. Um, the gear is off and you make a couple of little tweaks to it and then the rest is up to you. What do you want to do to this thing to make it feel good, make it work? And you go out there, you start doing those changes, start playing around with it and you'll notice that, hey man, this stuff feels really good. It works good and I'm getting better. I'm getting more consistent. And that's hopefully what this little video series is going to show you and help you with. So that's going to do it for all for this video. We got one more left that is going to be the slick track. We will be doing that. Um, and it'll become it'll be going up here in a few days. So these first three videos have been kind of released back to back to back. There's only been like a day in between each one. Um, by the time you're watching this one, the other two have already posted. But the slick track one is going to be a few days after this one was released just because I've, I have not re recorded that one yet. And my time for recording today is over. I've literally been here recording other stuff all day long. So um, I got to, you know, get it recorded and then get them edited. So it's going to be a few days away, but I will get it up here within the, the, the week. All right. The next week or so, um, because I want to make sure I get that up to you guys. Uh, so you got that way you guys have it and you can use this stuff to hopefully help you out there on the track but that'll do it thank you very much if this helped you or if you like this please hit that like button also subscribe to the channel it helps us out um, you know we're looking to to hit 20k this year that's the goal i'm actually going to be doing a giveaway for us hitting 10k um, i haven't gotten all the prizes figured out yet that i'm going to be giving away but i am going to be giving away some stuff um, on the channel here so, you know, thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys, you know, getting us this far. I never would have thought in a million years that we would even be at 10K, and we are. And now we want to see if we can get to 20, because uh, if we can do that, that would be incredible. So please, if you have not already, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, keep an eye out um, for more videos and my live streams, which I will be live streaming here this week quite a bit. Uh, we got the 24 hours of Daytona coming up at the time of recording this that I will be running in. And I might be doing a 24 hour live stream during that. Um, I'm not quite sure. I did one a couple years ago and it, it almost killed me, but I might try it again because it was pretty fun. Um, and I am a glutton for punishment apparently, but anyways we'll have to keep an eye out for that but that'll do it thank you very much until next time i want to wish you good luck good racing take care